Hi guys, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 2 of topic 3, Stoichiometry. Word equations are like written descriptions of chemical reactions. You describe what's happening using words. For example, sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid react to form sodium chloride and water. Sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid are the reactants in this reaction. Reactants are the substances you start with in a chemical reaction. The products or the substances that result from the reaction in this example are sodium chloride and water. State symbols tell us the physical state of the substances involved. S means solid. L means a liquid. G means gas. And AQ means aqueous. It indicates that a substance is dissolved in water. So, for our previous example, these will be the state symbols. In symbol equations, instead of words, we use chemical symbols or formulas like NaOH for sodium hydroxide and H2O for water. So, the equation for the reaction above becomes NaOH plus HCl to give NaCl plus H2O. Let's look at some guidelines for naming compounds. If the compound has a metal and a non-metal, the metal comes first. The non-metal ends with IDE. For example, potassium bromide. If the compound consists of two non-metals and one of them is hydrogen, then hydrogen comes first. For example, Hydrogen bromide. If the compound consists of two non metals, the lower group number element comes first. And if it's a compound with a metal and a common ion group, the metal comes first. These are the molecules that commonly occur with two atoms, and we show them using the format. For example, H2. Moving on to ionic equations. Some reactions involve ions or charged atoms. We use special equations to show these. Let's start with a balanced equation. Taking our same example, let's split up the aqueous compounds into ions because in water, ionic compounds break apart into their individual ions, separating them into the ions that originally composed them. So that gives Na plus plus OH minus plus H plus plus Cl minus to give Na plus plus Cl minus and H2O. Cancel out the ions that are the same on either side. Then we are left with this ionic equation. H plus plus OH minus to give H2O. Deducing symbol equations. This means figuring out the right symbol equation for a reaction when you are given information about it. So example 1, calcium reacts with chlorine gas to form calcium chloride. This is written as Ca plus Cl2. The 2 in Cl2 means there are two chlorine atoms in the diatomic molecule. 
Calcium is a group 2 element with a valency of plus 2. And chlorine has a valency of minus 1. The valencies are crisscrossed to derive the formula of CaCl2. Example 2. Write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction between sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide. Sulfuric acid dissociates into H plus and SO4 2 minus ions. And potassium hydroxide dissociates into K plus and OH minus ions. The H plus ions from sulfuric acid react with the OH minus ions from potassium hydroxide to form water. The remaining ions, K plus and SO42 minus, combine to form potassium sulfate or K2SO4. Now, this equation is not balanced. Balancing a chemical equation means making sure there are the same numbers of each type of atom on both sides. You use coefficients on numbers in front of chemicals to achieve this. Let's compare the number of atoms on the left hand side to the right hand side of the equation. So, we have three etchers on the left side and on the right hand side only two etchers. So, let's just try putting a 2 in front of the KOH for now. Balancing equations is all about trial and error. Let's forget about the H for a while and check if the SO4s are balanced on each side. And it looks like it is. If you come across common ion groups like SO42- that doesn't change from one side to the other, just count it as one thing, not all the separate parts. Now K, potassium, we have two Ks on the left hand side as well as two on the right hand side. Other than the O's in the sulfates, there are two O's on the left hand side because we added a two in front of the KOH, but only one O on the right hand side. So let's try adding a two in front of the H2O and see if that helps to balance this. So now the O's are balanced. There are four H's on the right hand side because two times two is four. The left hand side also has four H's. Looks like our equation is now balanced. You must always double check after using this trial and error method. Now you might be getting the hang of it. In this example, you have been asked for the balanced chemical equation for the oxidation of iron when it reacts with oxygen to form iron 3 oxide. Iron can exhibit different oxidation states. In this case, it's mentioned 3 in the iron 3 oxide, so we know it forms a Fe3 plus iron. So let's see how the formula is derived. Crisscrossing the valencies gives you Fe2O3. Now let's balance this equation. We have one iron on the left and two on the right. To balance, let's put a 2 in front of Fe on the left. Now let's check oxygen. We have two oxygen atoms on the left, but we have three on the right. Let's put a 3 in front of the O2 on the left. Now there are 6 O's on the left side and on the right side if we put a 2 in front of the Fe2O3 then we will get 6 oxygen atoms on the right side as well. Let's double check. We have 2 iron atoms on the left side and 4 iron atoms on the right side. So let's change the number in front of the iron to 4. Now the equation is balanced. In this example, calcium oxide reacts with nitric acid to produce calcium nitrate and water. 
Notice how the NO3 is enclosed in brackets showing that the 2 belongs to the whole nitrate ion. To balance this equation, we simply add a 2 in front of the HNO3 on the left side. In the next equation, there are 3 products. That concludes part 2 of topic 3, Stoichiometry. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye!